you know, I think about it, the more, you know, the more I think about it, you know, life can hit you from every way, but when you got a God that can cover you in every side, then what does it matter, you know? Amen. So you got a God that, that helps you in every way possible, and even when life does knock you down, He's there to pick you up. So, uh, I just been thinking on that, John, I appreciate those words, because uh, they really got me thinking. But enough of me. Let's get to the Word of God. We're going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Again, that is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. I'll give you all a moment to turn. Luke, Tile task. 
to cast your line back into the water. After numerous hours of waiting in anticipation for the fish to bite, it can become a little discouraging when you don't even get a nibble. Then on top of that, let's add the mosquitoes, whose sole purpose in that moment is to cause you the most annoyance and distraction possible. Eventually, the only decision is to go home and try again another day. But I will say and I, that any, even, a, even a bad day of fishing is a good day. So, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, so, there you have it. But many of my fishing trips throughout my childhood, and even up to now, have ended this way. So in reading the scripture that, 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 we've, that have been placed before us today, I can begin to understand why Simon must have been discouraged or even doubtful in the events that took place. And so let's take a look at that story again. We find ourselves uh, following Jesus along the shore of Gennesaret, which, by the way, it's just another name for the Sea of Galilee. Luke wanted to use a different name. Um, upon this journey, Jesus was being followed by a, a, a great crowd who were imploring him and asking him over and over to teach them and give them some of his wisdom. So as Luke tells us, Jesus comes across two boats on this journey, and the fishermen were out of their boats and washing their nets. So Jesus goes up to Simon and asks him to pull his boat out a little way into the water so that Jesus could use his boat as a floating pulpit of sorts. He then sits down and begins teaching the crowd. In seeing this story transpire, I, I really do admire Simon for getting back into his boat so that Jesus can teach from him. He had already been out all night fishing and, and, and casting his net into the water and, and for no return. <coughs> Got nothing from him. As you can imagine, I'm sure that Simon was tired, frustrated, ready to go home. Let's be real. I can tell he was discouraged. I know he was discouraged. Because the fishing trips that I went on were just a day out with Dad. It made no difference whether or not we caught fish, because we were going home to eat dinner. But for Simon, fishing, that was his livelihood. That's how he ate. That's how he lived. So surely, after a night full of not catching anything, he has suffered a heavy blow. Yet despite this discouraging outcome and, and being discouraged, along with his, his partners who were there, Simon still does as Jesus asks, so that Jesus may teach his crown. And upon, teaching, upon, upon finishing the teaching, Jesus then tells Simon to cast his net into the deeper waters. Understandably, Simon and the other fishermen are a little doubtful of this request. And they're saying, you know, after spending the entire night on the lake with nothing to show for it, but empty nets and tired eyes. Yet, and here we go again, Simon does as Jesus says, and casts his net into the deeper waters. Much to Simon's surprise, the nets become so full of fish that they are impossible to pull up. And it causes the boats to start sinking once they get the uh, sinking once they get the uh, the fish into the boats. It is at this moment that Simon tells Jesus, "Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man." Luke informs us after this that, that there are the other of the other fishermen who were with Simon, and they were James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Although uh, other gospel accounts, like uh, Matthew, also mention Andrew who was uh, assumed to be there. Luke doesn't mention it. So, uh, for, for the sake of this, this gospel, I'm going to leave Andrew out, even though I'm, I'm pretty sure he was there. Um, but to, be, uh, to, to tell it as Luke tells it is how I want to, uh, to be. So, uh, so, James, John, and Simon. Jesus says to all of them, a very resounding statement, do not be afraid. 
From now on, you will be catching people. And as Luke tells us, they return to shore, leave everything, and follow Jesus. Within the story that Luke tells us, there's a lot of things that we can learn from the events that took place. However, for today, I want to focus on, on three key things that caught my attention when studying the scripture. The first thing I want to discuss is Simon's reaction to the miracle that Jesus performed in this story. As you can recall, immediately after the, uh, after the fish filled the net, Simon says to Jesus, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. One of the biggest questions I have concerning this reaction from Simon is, why here? Why now? Why does he react this way in this moment? What's confusing to me is that this isn't the first time Simon has met Jesus. In chapter 4, Jesus called, uh, is called to Simon's house where he heals his mother. Why did he not say this then? Knowing this, it leads me to believe that in those moments, as Simon witnessed this miracle, all these fish filling these nets, after they had spent all night fishing with nothing to return for it, there's something within Simon's heart and mind changed that prompted him to understand this situation differently than before. Maybe this man Jesus was more than just a miracle worker who healed his mother. Maybe Simon has come to understand that he is standing in the presence of divinity. Which would lead him to say, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. In his words, Simon exhibits a feeling of unworthiness. Unworthy to stand before the Divine One, Jesus. Which leads me to the next thing I want to talk about. Which is Jesus' call to Simon, James, and John. Remember that Jesus says to them, do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. I find this part in the story to be one of the most beautiful and most hope-filled parts. As Jesus looks upon Simon, the man who had just said, Go away from me, I am a sinful man, not worthy to stand at your feet. Jesus looks at Simon. He sees their fears. And an act of compassion tells them, Don't be afraid. Not only that, but Jesus then looks to the, the sinful, unworthy man and says to them, From now on you will be catching people. Despite your unworthiness, despite your sinfulness, you will be catching people. I am calling you. Even as sinful and unworthy as Simon may be, Jesus still issues a call to follow and serve him. More so. Even after Simon resists Jesus by telling him that they had already fished all night with no return for their effort, Jesus still calls him. This says to me that Jesus' call to Simon and to the others was not dependent on their worthiness. It was, regard it was extended to them regardless. The final thing I want to talk about is Simon, James, and John's a response to the call. In the final verses of our scripture, they return to shore, immediately drop everything, and follow Jesus. I want to understand, I want us to understand, how huge this moment is. These men had just spent an entire night and caught nothing. They were tired, worn, discouraged, with no way to feed themselves or their families. Yet after the miracle that Jesus performs, they leave behind the haul of fish that could have provided for their family for a long time. To leave behind the very catch that could have changed their lives completely. To follow in the footsteps of Christ. 
to face persecution, to face death. Now I will point out, because I know that Jesus is not going to be wasteful, those fish probably still went to feed a lot of people, as the area in which they were fishing was known for its, uh, its fishing industry as, as well as its salting industry. So they probably salted a lot of those fish and preserved them so that the families around the area could eat. No matter the case, surely to answer this call from Jesus was very hard for Simon, James, and John. So what do we take away from this? What do we take away from this story? From this, these events that took place? Well, I can, I can tell you a couple things. First and foremost, you, me, we have been blessed to stand before the divine of Jesus, to have a relationship with Jesus. Not only that, you have been called by Jesus. And the beautiful thing, at least, you know, I look at it, and I try to think about all of my life, and I see Jesus calling me, and then I also see me doing these really stupid things a long time ago. And I'm like, Jesus, why, why are you calling me? Look at what I've done. Look, look at the mistakes I've made. I am fully unworthy of serving you. And I feel a lot of us could probably say the same thing. I'm not worthy of serving you. I'm not worthy of even standing before you or saying your name. But here I am. Here we are. You are called. Regardless of how unworthy you may be. Whether you're a sinful man or a sinful woman. Jesus has said, I understand. Don't be afraid. Just follow me. Sir, go out and tell others who, who are in sin, who are still in those sinful moments of their lives. Let them know that they too are, can be a part of this family. The other thing we can take away from this is that it's not easy. Follow Jesus' call. Just like Peter, or well, it, well Simon Peter, it, it's, it's who that is. I hadn't been mentioned that explicitly, but Simon Peter. We have the tendency to resist Jesus' call. I know I did. I did it for a while. <coughs> Jesus' call can lead us into some really, really scary places. Amen. Places that we're like, Jesus, you're crazy. Absolutely crazy for calling me. What are you doing? But we should be like Simon in those moments. And though we might be a little uh, hesitant to do it, we should follow him anyway. Because at the end of the day, I'd much rather follow Jesus into the craziest parts of this world than to sit by and be comfortable. So yes, answering this call is a difficult, difficult thing to do. But it is one that is more fulfilling than you will ever know. This life can't give you the same amount of joy, the same amount of, of love. <clears throat> that following Jesus can. So let us go from this place today, understanding that we have been called, though unworthy we are. We've been called by a wonderful, loving Savior. Amen.
to go out and reach others and show them that love. And to go without fear. To know that even though we will be in some rough spots and life will hit you from every direction, that there's no other place you'd rather be than following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Most heavenly and gracious God, You are a wonderful Father. You guide us throughout our lives, teaching us, loving and caring for us. God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who has seen past our sinful ways, who has seen past our unworthiness, understands us, and said, follow me. God, as we go from this place today, let us follow Jesus without fear, without hesitation. Let us be like the disciples like the Apostle Paul, who faced persecution, who faced terrible things, but not once did they back down. God, we thank you for the chance to serve. To go out and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ in this world. We thank you for who you are, for what you do. It's in your son's holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.